Hello, hello. Welcome to our podcast. Uh, this is episode number six. I had to look that up. I am Deepika, founder of PatternReview.com, and you'll notice that today I'm in a different room, different setting, and I have a lovely guest here with me. I am really excited about today's episode because today I'm switching gears and I'm going to be the one asking questions. Um, usually you send me questions and I'm happy to answer them, but um, it's always nice to switch things up a little bit and I will introduce our guest in a minute. So um, thank you for watching and thank you for following me in this new journey of um, YouTube podcasting. So let's get started. Um, I am sitting here in my pattern review office, which I will probably give you a tour of at some point. But today we have with us Carolyn Denham. And if you don't know about Carolyn, she is the co-owner of Merchant and Mill uh, Merchant and Mills Fabrics and Pattern Company coming to us from Rye, UK. Um, I'll give you a brief intro. Carolyn Denham and Roderick Field began Merchant and Mills in 2010 with the intention of bringing style and purpose to the overlooked world of sewing. Carolyn has a degree in fashion design and has worked in New York, Italy, and London. Roderick Field is a respected photographer with work in the National Portrait Gallery. Their ethos is to respect the roots of sewing from trade to home dressmaking as they enable and inspire more people to find the satisfaction of simply making. Merchant and Mill products are stocked in the world's most respected outlets and the company has successfully collaborated with London's v &A Museum, I have been there, and Alexander McQueen. We are very excited they're a complete line of Sewing Patterns is now available on Pattern Review. Welcome, Carolyn. I will tell you that one of the things which is um, very important to me is the precious gift of time. So I respect your time. Thank you so much for coming today and giving us your time. Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Um, so uh, Carolyn, tell us, is this your home studio, office studio? Where are you right now? Well, actually, this is a bit of a temporary studio. We are in the middle of, uh, we've commissioned a new um, studio, warehouse and distribution uh, place down by Rye Harbour. Uh, it's not ready yet. And we have expanded. So we are going, Rye is a very small town. It's a very beautiful, um, pretty, a uh, quintessentially English town. Um, but we have now little bits all over Rye. We have our main shop and warehouse. We have our main distribution place here, but we also have lockups and small spaces in order that we are to, to accommodate all the little bits that we need. So this is a temporary space that we've, we've just taken on in order to put the sewing studio and the pattern development and um, some of the offices here while this warehouse is being built. That's amazing. I love it. And um, I see that you have, before we started the recording, we had to adjust the lighting a little bit because um, you're still getting such, this is 4 p.m. your time and it's um, yeah. 11 o'clock here and you're still getting such good sun there, which is awesome. <laughs> well, it's quite unusual. <laughs> so we've had some, we've had some amazingly beautiful, you know, those crisp, lovely, sunny winter's days. So we've had some great sunshine, but we've had a lot of grey weather too, which, you know, um, so we're very happy for the sunshine. Cheers us all up. Um, makes you feel like spring is on its way. That's awesome. And then here, here I am making you shut the blind. Knees <laughs> <laughs> um, must, knees must. Um, okay, so um, I just love your patterns. It's and your packaging, and everything to me screams that I want to sew this. And um, I noticed that most of your patterns are. To me, they seem like blank canvases and they're not necessarily yeah. trendy, but I actually mm -hmm. take that as a plus because to yeah. me, it seems that they're timeless. 
So yeah. tell me a little bit about if you are not following the trend, um, how is it that a new pattern design comes to you? What are you inspired by? And a good question. I mean, we, I, I can't, you know, like trends are always like seeping in, you know, even if you say, oh, I'm creating something timeless, there is always an element of fashion about that. And I'm always tuned into, you know, I have, I've trained in fashion and worked in fashion. So I'm always tuned into what's going on and you can't help but start to like things that maybe a couple of years ago you thought were awful and you're like, well, what's happened to me? You know, and that's, that's the mystery of fashion. <laughs> that's happened to me. That's it's happened like, to me. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, it's like a mystery. You don't even know what, you know, but, and we all sort of agree at the same time that we like it amazingly. But um, I think what I try to, to, look at is that there are things that will will suddenly like interest me uh, a style a look uh, an era or something that I'm like oh I, you know I really like that and I will do some investigation into it but I, what I won't look at is what the other designers are doing so they've probably got almost the same point of inspiration as I've got but I will instead maybe you know I if I'm going to get say a vintage inspiration I'm not going to look at a tea dress. I'm going to look at an artist's smock because that is the Merchant and Mill style. We are more utility. We're more pared back. We're more like you say, a blank canvas. It's like that thing can be made in lots of different fabrics and look completely different. And our we're always a little bit utility about, not always, but a little bit about what we do. So, you know, inspiration can come from anywhere. So it might be just people watching, you know, sitting in a cafe and you just see somebody, oh, you know, I, I kind of like a trench coat now. Didn't like a trench coat. What's trench coat? Then you kind of look into trench coats and you look into the history of trench coats and you look into, you know, over the, what's it become over the years? And then you maybe pick up on some detailing. And so you'd maybe don't, the pattern doesn't end up to be a trench coat, but it has some detailing and some nods to it. So we're moving away from maybe what will be the fashion, the trench coat, but we're just, we're doing our interpretation of it. So it's, it's not, um, we don't, you know, I don't work very, I'm not very disciplined in the idea of working seasonally uh, or, or putting proper collections together. It's a little bit, I'm, you know, it's a bit better now than it used to be, but it's well, a bit you know ad hoc. I think that's the strength of an artist that it really is um you know it's it's pretty amazing I think a part of uh growing older and realizing how I work is to kind of come to terms with more of my personality yeah what, where in which conditions do I work best so I can produce yeah. the best for me so I think yeah. knowing that it's okay to not um release collections is important and it's it's who you are and who we embrace. I, I think also it's like, that's what the fashion industry does. The fashion industry, the pressure on a designer to constantly, you know, make, you know, design new garments, new ideas, new colorways, new this. It's like an immense pressure of, you know, it's not just, you know, autumn, winter, it's not even four seasons. It's like, you know, people are doing collections in between that and it's who wants to be in you know under that who wants to be in that world I don't know it's like not, not for me I at think all. I'm always also thinking about the environmental impact absolutely um, and it's the fashion industry is the number two pollutant of yeah. the earth so we have to like consciously make that decision what we are bringing so. to this planet yeah, and I think, you know, um, home sewers are, you know, part of an alternative to the high street. They have found another way of creating their, their wardrobe, their clothes, and it's not being part of that huge industry that will and, and will definitely change. We will see radical change in the na next few years, no doubt. But, you know, as a, as a, you know, as a seamstress, you can, you're, you're already making those changes. You're already making those choices not to join that, that, that band, that high street 
that constant duh, 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 more, more, more. Newness, more <laughs> new and shiny. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I have to share a story with you. Um, so my daughter is an artist. She likes to paint and I like to sew and knit. Um, a parent, she's only 11. And so she tells me that she wants a bucket hat. And okay. here I am um, uploading your patterns and pattern <laughs> review and I come across this bucket hat. Wait a minute, we could do this and why don't I make it in canvas? I'll cut out the pieces in canvas and then you can paint it and then I can sew it together. She loves this idea. And I'm thinking that um, this is such a great way to collaborate with mm. my daughter using one of your yeah. patterns. So I'm looking for a small but meaningful project um, Fantastic. Which kind of combines both our love of creating. And, um, and this kind of uh, made me think of looking at your patterns a little bit more because part of some of the sewing which I do is, I don't know if you're familiar with her work, Natalie Channon. She does yeah. reverse yeah, she applique. Does so I'm actually things. wearing the yeah. shirt which, uh, using a yeah, pattern which my friend created. I feel like a lot of your patterns will probably appear appeal to people who do surface design. They add their own touch to yeah. Yeah. using simpler fabrics, but adding yeah. their own personality to it. Yeah, I think you know that's you know the whole the advantage of the whole sewing world is like it's you know what your personality is, and you can you can transfer that onto your garment with your color choices, anything the fit the color choices, the styling, everything, it's yours. And the more skilled you get, the more you can add your own personality. And once you find the patterns that work for you, you know, that's it, that's that box ticked. It's like, there you go, you know, you'd love to wear that. You can make it, you can embellish it, you can make it up in all kinds of fabrics. It's it's there as your kind of uniform for, for how let ever however long that one will last. Absolutely. So I'm going to kind of this question is sort of like asking you to pick between your children, but do you have uh, <laughs> which of your merchant and mill patterns is your favorite or something you've made multiple times? Well, that's a hard one because I would say I probably made the most of the trapeze because I've made that in everything from vintage grow grain to fine linen to Harris tweed. It's been in every fabric, you know, really? it's so, wow. quick, so quick and easy to make. Um, but probably now I'm wearing mostly the Ellis. So I've got a lot of Ellis dresses. And again, I'm wearing one now and it's in a very crispy um, Italian overstock fabric. So it's got a quite a billowous feel, quite sculptural. Um, are you no, it's, um, it's a synthetic. It's an overstock that we bought okay. from an Italian mill. Um, but I have them, last year I made one in a white linen and literally it was, you know, on all day, in the wash on in the wash it, I just could I just thought it was the best thing to wear uh every time I tried to wear something else I ended up putting that back on so yeah I've got loads of those I've got denim and some Japanese waffle fabric all kinds of things and again it you know it looks completely different in all these different fabrics so that's my current favorite um I have a lot of field addresses as well I seem to have made a lot of field again I think it's so comfortable so easy to wear you can you know put it on with a pair of sandals or a pair of boots you know and these things are still in my wardrobe so the trapeze pattern is now 12 years old and I still have the trapeze in my wardrobe the fielder is probably eight years old uh, so even is the, that your first pattern is trapeze dress your first pattern? trapeze was one of the first patterns yeah wow yeah. that's fantastic still, still chugging along and it's nice that's nice. I love that. I and it's again, it's timeless. That pattern. Well, that, is... Yeah, that's what I want it to be. I want, you know, it's if you've made something beautiful, and again, you know, you want to be able to return to that pattern, you know, over and over again. If it's working for you, um, you want to just be able to know that's where I'm gonna go, that's what I'm gonna make. I can make it in velvet, I can make it in, you know, 12 ounce denim, I can do, I can do what I like, but I know it works for me, I know it suits me. You know, and that that's what that's what you want. We don't want to constantly be, you know, making new choices, new choices. 
I mean, right. there, there's an element of we, we do want to be excited and we do want right, to right, right. things, but you want this, this kind of base of things that is, is working, I think. That's fantastic. I think I, um, so I, I like that and I, tr I find myself going back to uh, the same thing. Like if I have a few patterns, which are tried and two, true, I can just make it in a different fabric and yeah. put, it completely looks different different yeah, hands, yeah, different yeah. feel, but yes, yeah. the comfort factor is there. And then I don't have to fit it all over again. So I just uh, have a very finite amount of time. Yeah. And in that, I want to just enjoy the process. So I appreciate that as well. Yeah. And you just don't want it to go out of style. You don't want to, oh, I did these, you know, this fancy collar and now it's, you know, not the thing and I can't wear that, but I really enjoyed making it. And I really took my time and I made it beautifully. But now it's it's kind of its moments over. And uh, you, when you're making your own clothes, you have a different relationship with your clothes. I think it's a much more uh, a personal journey, and you know that that garment inside out. Every stitch is yours, so you don't want to give it up so easily. Absolutely. And if you've made, um, you know, once I so I started pattern review twenty years ago, and once I knew that okay, this is sticking. I really, really like sewing. I just um, stop sewing with cheaper fabrics. I just, and yeah. I don't like the feel of polyester on my body anyway. Yeah. So I've always um, kind of gravitated towards more natural fibers and, yeah. and yeah. they just last longer and they look and feel better more and more you wash them. I still have a, a linen Burda pattern shirt linen shirt uh, made up from a burda pattern princess theme there's nothing old-fashioned or new trendy about it it's a button-down shirt which fits me now even and it's <laughs> I there's no reason to give that up no absolutely and you know my my mom who taught me to sew who was a great seamstress she always said buy the the most expensive fabric you can afford because um if you're going to put you know, sewing is, you know, not about saving money. It's, it's, if you're going to put all that effort into making something beautifully and you're going to make it much better than, than most of what's available on the high street, then, you know, treat, you know, be kind to yourself, make, make it out of the best fabric you can, you can afford. And, you know, we all have a budget to work with, but right. it, it will be better. It will be better if it's in a beautiful fabric. And obviously we're all about natural fibers. So, you know, we're also thinking about, you know, our carbon footprint, about sustainability. So that's really important to us. Um, we're transferring all our fabrics onto either organic cotton or, you know, uh, we're buying in a lot more hemp and obviously we have a huge linen collection. So it's all about really great quality and fabrics that are, uh, you know, the most sustainable that we can find, you know, things like tensile is another fantastic fabric, you know, works like a lot of other, you know, synthetic fabrics does, but it's um, a closed loop system. So it's not creating it, uh, any waste and uh, right, all the chemicals and everything. Yeah. And much more sustainable. Yeah, yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah, for those who do, I forgot to mention that, um, you know, you can buy their fabrics on their website and they ship worldwide. And uh, they are, the, and the tools are absolutely beautiful. We were talking about it before I hit the record button that your packaging, your tools are just so lovely. I have um, one of your gold scissors, which I picked up from oh, Gold Fabric nice. in Portland, I think at a PR weekend when we had gone and um, I've been inspired by your work for a long time. Thank so you, it's, it's, thank they're you. Just, they're just beautiful. I mean, I feel like having those, um, those good tools is so important for any activity. I have like really nice pots and pans in my kitchen. I just like working with good tools. I think, you know, it's like it, it not only makes your job easier, but it makes it more pleasurable when your scissors just, you know, work like a knife through butter and you're like, oh, that's, so listen to that sound as you're cutting out. Yeah. It's like, it's a noise, isn't it? We should record it. Uh, and, you know, lovely pair of scissors make that whole thing more pleasurable and the, the finished result is much better. So, you know, it's nice to, to you know, treat yourself to real quality, quality fabrics, 
quality tools. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so I know that I said that we may keep this interview to 20, 25 minutes. I do have a few more questions, if you don't mind saying. That's fine. That's absolutely um, fine. So let's talk about how has the pandemic affected your work at Merchant and Mills? Has it affected at all? If so, how and if you want to share with us? Well, the pandemic was, you know, obviously it's been, you know, a, you know, well, difficult worldwide. Um, for us, we, um, you know, we immediately closed the whole business when the when the first lockdown happened, and we were took us a few days, only a few days, to work out how to keep things going. And the, the first thing we realised was, you know, we're getting bombarded with people you know are, are you know are you still open are you going to sell stuff are you still I was like you know everybody you know needs something to do now so um we reworked we reshifted everybody around within the company so everybody could work socially distanced in a safe environment and yeah it just went quite bonkers really so um I think a lot of people who who's so already you know took advantage of it and just, you know, nothing to do in the evening, sewing. And uh, I think a lot of people, you know, started sewing. It was, uh, you know, new to it and found a new passion. And so the pandemic was um, was an interesting time, you know, um, but I think for, for a lot of people have found a new skill and a new, a new craft in that time, which is exactly what we want to happen. That's that's amazing. And uh, so I'm going to ask you if if someone came to you, you know, I'm sure you've encountered those people looking at your beautiful clothes, and they say, "Oh, I wish I could sew." What would your answer be to them? So I would always say, um, start simple, make a bag. I get in some small wins straight away. Make some, get a pattern, something sim a simple bag to make. Follow the instructions. There's so much information on online. Learn it. Watch some 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 videos. Go to pattern review. Find out some information, and and don't don't cheat. Good seamstresses do it properly and take time. And make some make your first thing really simple thing and make it as well as you possibly can and and then build on that because what you want to, to have is the wins so your first success if you made like an oil skin bag really simple easy fabric to use really simple thing to make and you have when you've finished it you turn it out and it's going to look great and people are going to ask you where you got that bag from okay you've got a win in there so you need to then then you can kind of start to slowly up your game but what's amazing now um that's happened you know since i'm sure since pattern review and since i started business is how much is how much learning there is available online that people are giving their skills and and knowledge for free and and um explaining how you do something and that's just amazing the sewing community is really i think a lovely amazing sharing and kind community to belong to and there's so much good knowledge that that's shared with no personal gain at all and how lovely is that that is very lovely. Um, when did you first find out about pattern review and what role do you think it plays, this website plays in the sewing industry? Well, we talked about this a little bit um, before we, we started. And I think, um, so pattern review was one of the very first places that I discovered online. So when, you know, sort of 12 years ago when I started Merchant and Mills, there wasn't so much all the in, you know instagram and and right. all those sort of groups weren't around even the youtube you know channels and all this kind of it wasn't around but pattern review was there so pattern review was you know and i used to click on is merchant and mills there yeah is merchant and mills yeah <laughs> <laughs> has anybody reviewed a pattern and um but i think it, it's an amazing uh, resource for 
you know, we were talking about before how when you when you you buy a pattern and you you know, well, this is what it looks like, this is what they're advising me to do, these are what the photographs look like. But you go into pattern review, you can look at that pattern and you can get, you know, what other people think about it, and you'll get lots of tips and advice of, you know, maybe, you know you know make it bigger here or it was a bit you know small here or or what whatever it might be but this this kind of all this knowledge about this one pattern before you've even started and we were talking before about the disappointment of making yes, the disappointment all that time and effort and you're like I don't like it it's not what I thought it's you know I wish I'd just you know put in that different sleeve or change the neckline but the pattern review really gives you that opportunity to to get some of that information before you start and um yeah I'm sure you know people use it all the time before they even start making anything and just to, you know look at what's popular look what people are loving I think so and I I for me like I know you we talked about it earlier is that the reason I started pattern review was a very selfish one because I didn't have any friends who sewed <laughs> and I just needed to um, feel excited and talk about these patterns which uh, don't look like that on me <laughs> when I wear them. what is going on here and I think to be able to find that community and create that community oh of God. people who are just making things you know one of the things I'm very passionate about is like sewing for the present showing for what I am today and yeah. feeling more confident as I step out the door yeah. and being inspired by all of the wonderful things people are creating and sharing. And yeah. you're absolutely right about the kindness and the fact that people actually want other people to learn and to sew. Yeah, yeah. And it's pretty yeah, amazing. I think that I think the whole community think, thinks that. And I think, you know, it's such an inclusive community it, I think, you know, it's a bit of a kind of, the, the thing, in, unless you're in the sewing community, you don't really know that it exists, you know, um, and people are like, oh, you know, do people sew? And it's like, well, yeah, <laughs> loads. But um, but it, it is a, a bit of an, an eye-opener, I think, to other industries, it's how, how lovely the sewing community is. And it's nice to support each other. I, you know, I always feel that there's always room for uh, everyone and we can learn from each other, yeah. up, you know, lift each other up and yeah. Um, yeah. learn from yeah. each other's and experiences, enjoy each other's experiences beyond the borders. You know, you're in UK, my best friend lives there. So it's like my second home. Next time I visit her, I am definitely making a trip to Rye and seeing your- <laughs> Well, we look forward to seeing you. And um, I, I want I have one more question because you've been in this industry for 12 years. Um, mm. You know, what are some of those? Do you have any moments which you think back on and they make you smile, some highlights, some wins, as we talked about? Um, what are some of those you'd love to share with our um, watchers and readers and viewers today? I think, oh gosh, it's quite a lot because, you know, every year is this up and down of all right. kinds of things happening. And when when I started Merchant Mills, it's like, it's an idea. It's an idea and it's me and Roderick and we're in a studio and we're, do, we're putting labels on pins, we're packing patterns, we're doing it all. And in those 12 years, you make a company and that's a different thing. That's a different idea. It's an, it's an entity now. And I think my biggest pleasure is from um from the staff because the merchant mills is no longer me it was me when i started but that's not what it is now and <laughs> um some very key members of staff when they started um when they started with me have you know have been part of transforming the business and growing the business and adding all, lots of things that i would never have thought of to the business so it is a whole so watching somebody i it is a family and i think watching somebody come in and they're starting you know they're cutting fabric and they're packing orders 
and then you know they're running a whole department you know a few you know they're they're starting to create their own patterns they're designing the textiles it's such an exciting thing to see and that is probably the biggest you know pleasure i get from from you know of having created this thing that is like i said it's a company now it's not just an idea and I think, you know, the downs are always things that are out of our control that, you know, um, and they're always something like accounting systems <laughs> that don't work properly or something. But mostly I think it's a, a really, you know, wonderful industry to, to work in. And I feel very privileged to, to uh, have had success within this industry. This is wonderful. As you are sharing these thoughts with us, I'm, I'm looking at you and and seeing you talk about with uh, with so much passion and so much joy. It's it's so clear that you love what you do, and we love what you do. And um, I always feel that businesses they're not rooms or stuff or things. There, it's about people. It's and it's so, it's yeah. so nice to finally meet you and get to know you a little bit better. And um, I'm just so excited to be able to carry your patterns and um, oh, we're excited too. And thank you so much for your time today. I really, really loved meeting you and hopefully we'll see each other in person soon. Yes, well, we're waiting for you to walk through the door in Rye. We'd love to see you. <laughs> I'd love that too. I'd love that. <laughs> thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And um, before I actually go, I should I should thank you all for watching this uh, very real made in the office over Zoom video with no editing, because <laughs> that's what I promised you, that I'm going to be myself and real. And um, I hope you enjoyed this interview. Thank you. Bye.